Oh, neat. Yes, I can borrow this, read it. Pardon? I can borrow this and read it. Of course, I'd like for you to. Okay. And you can, as I mentioned, Pass it share it if it's worth Rochelle, reading. His, on, the, on this Santa was very good. to a senior, uh, their gift card, is it they want money? Is that it? I mean, is that? Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's high value. It's not. Yeah, that's not good evening, uh, Chuck. Howdy, howdy. I, okay. Huh? Okay. I mean, somebody. Well, yeah, you're six feet apart, so when you talk, I would think you could drop this. <laughs> well. Anyway, the, uh, it's good just, evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to call to order the. Keneal Recreation and Park District Board of Directors meeting to order for this uh, Thursday, November 19th. And we have a special guest who's going to lead us in a pledge, Mr. Wyatt McRae. Thank you, George. Please play, place, face, the pack, <laughs> face the flag and place your hand over your heart and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States of America. America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Wyatt. Roll call, please, Elaine. Director Present. Director Nichols. Yes. Director Holt. Here. Director Hopper. Yes. Director Hopper. Here. We have a quorum. Good to see you all. And we're moving on to special presentations. And Mr. Wyatt McCray, I understand you're going to do the McCray Ranch presentation this evening. Yes, thank you, Director Lang. Is it all right? Am I far enough away to take this off? Yes, please do. Thank you. That's much better. I can breathe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and talk. We can hear you. <laughs> that's, that's good. Well, thank you, directors and staff, for having me this evening. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here and give you a quick update on the McCray Ranch in 2020. Um, I think I'd probably be redundant, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think this is a year we're probably all ready to stick in the rearview mirror. Uh, <laughs> this has uh, been a year we can forget for sure. So, uh, but with that said, um, the fact that we haven't been able to have all of our normal activities this year, uh, you know, our, our normal fundraising events, uh, uh, we haven't been able to hold any weddings or anything of that nature. Um, it, it has been an unusual in that regard, but. Uh, unusual year in that regard, but we have not been sitting on our laurels. This has actually been a very, very busy year for us. And so uh, if I could bring up the slides, uh, thanks, to, uh, thanks to our wonderful, generous donors and, and our patrons, and above all, thanks to the uh, Canal Recreation and Park District matching grant program, we have had one of the busiest years as far as rehabilitation of our buildings and facilities that we've ever had. Keep going there, Andrew. I got to thank Andrew too for putting together this. Uh, he took my pictures and made a wonderful slideshow. <laughs> so one, one of the first things we did, uh, which has been on my agenda for several years, was painting the exterior of the main house. And for those of you that have been there, uh, you know that it was starting to get to the point where it needed paint. It was last painted about 15 years ago, I believe. And uh, it was starting to show signs of, signs of uh, wear, wear and tear. So. That, that was the first project. This was a $25,000 project to paint the uh, exterior of the house. You can keep going here, Andrew. And as you can see, uh, it looks much better after, after it was completed. So it was uh, a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful weight off my shoulders to get, uh, get that project under our hats. So, and while we were at the main house, uh, we decided that, uh, and for those of you that have been inside, you know that in the kitchen and the dining area, uh, the paint was starting to peel off of the ceilings. Uh, it was a constant battle to keep it swept up and that sort of thing. As you can see there, that's what it was looking like. So we decided to move inside while the painters were there, decided to move inside and, 
and paint uh, just two rooms, basically the dining room and the kitchen area. And uh, you can, and so it was, this was, a, this was definitely something I wanted to get done. I wanted to get done for 30 years. And so we were finally able to do that. And, uh, and it came out great. Uh, we're, I was very grateful to, uh, to have the painters on site to be able to do this and, and move into this project once we finished the exterior. Uh, on top of that, we moved on down to the lower compound of buildings. And uh, as, you, as all of you know, the, the buildings were built in the early 30s and, and uh, concrete was not what it is today back then. And uh, we had some, some foundations that were starting to, starting to show, show some signs of deterioration. So we, uh, uh, this was an $8,000 project to uh, reinforce the foundations on the milk house and the upper barn. And both had, had started to lean slightly. So this was something that was, was very much in need. And, uh, and I was happy to get this done as well. So, and we'll move on to the next project. And for those of you that have been to the ranch and been up to the house, you know how bumpy the road was and how, uh, how deteriorated it was becoming. Uh, not only that, but also the driveway around the, uh, uh, around the carport and the bunkhouse in that area. So now you can see what it looks like. It's very nice and smooth. Uh, the road going up to the house, you can, you can drive a, a very low car up to the house now and you won't bottom out anywhere. So it's, uh, it's, it's, I, I thought this was going to be a much more expensive project than it turned out to be. Um, we used the contractor, the asphalt contractor that did the uh, driveway around the visitor center when we built the visitor center. The gentleman that owns that company became a friend of mine. He gave us a little break on this. So we were able to do all the driveway area and the road going up to the house for about $31,000. So it was, it was fantastic and, and much, much needed. Um, it uh, hopefully will at least last us another 15 years or so, 15, 20 years, maybe longer, hopefully. So, um, and again, this was, this was all, all due to the generosity of our donors last year and our year end appeal. And then thanks to the, uh, to the matching grant program that the, that the park district uh, uh, facilitates, uh, that was the only way we could have gotten it done. And so we were very happy to get it done. So, uh, so next time you're out there, hopefully, uh, hopefully by, you know, next, next uh, first quarter of next year or the end of first quarter next year or somewhere in there, we'll be able to get everybody back out there again. And, and we'll, we'll have kind of a, grand reopening probably at our at our annual cowboy cookout which is usually in may so that's my hope anyway at this point and knock on wood we get a vaccine out pretty soon and we can start rolling again that's it i'm open to questions if anybody has anything oh. <laughs> we have we have to see andrew smoke there it is that's the smoke from the brand so anyway <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Very good. Good report. Board members, any questions? Yes, Director Huffer. Not a question, but just comments. I have really missed the Cowboy Cookout, the movies, and all the other stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I would just add to what you said, hope that we can get back to doing all of this next year, because the, the ranch is one of my favorite spots in the entire district. And, and, um, my summer was very quiet without all those activities. So uh, do something about getting them back. <laughs> we're, we're working on that. Thank you, Director Huffer. Uh, but I am going to miss the, the bumpy ride out to the, out the house. <laughs> well, it was one of a kind in that bus when going up to the house for sure. But uh, everybody will be able to stay in their seat now and not have to pick up themselves by the time they get up there. But thank you for your comments. We obviously, we could have done some things outside, but our main draw is not while we do have things to see outside, our main draw is inside the buildings and that sort of thing. So it made it very difficult to, to uh, social distance this year, as well as a lot of our volunteers and docents. Um, uh, we're not necessarily uh, ready to come back yet with all that was going on. So we, we will get there in, in short order, I hope. So thank you. Thank you, Director Huffer. Director Cussworth. So, um... Yes, the ranch has a huge draw for me because I've been, you know, since I got to know Wyatt, I've been out there volunteering and I've missed the movies. I've missed the popcorn and M&Ms and checking people in and trying to sell the raffle tickets and, and just sitting out there and watching movies at night. But, you know, my favorite place in Canal Valley is the front porch of the visitor center because when I sit there and look out, it feels like it, like you're a hundred years in the past. 
I mean, it's just a, a beautiful, unspoiled view of Caneo Valley that you just can't really get. So, you know, I'm so glad that we've preserved it. And I'm really glad that you've gotten that work done because I was at another historic house, um, not in the Caneo Valley, but, you know, fairly nearby. And I guess they didn't have the money to restore, but it was a wealthy family and the curtains were in shreds, the bedspreads were in shreds. And I said, you know, this doesn't look very good. And I said, well, we want the original stuff. And I go, but the people wouldn't have lived like this. It makes them look shabby. Right. And so, I mean, I think that is, you know, a, a big thing to tackle to try to keep a house that looking original, but yet not completely original. And I think a lot of the things you've done with some of the curtains and then, you know, sort of uh, just maintaining it because if they were still alive, of course it would be maintained. Right. So, um, you know, that's important to do. And, you know, if we want to keep having that as a place where people can come and enjoy and see the past and having an actual ranch, um, we don't we don't have that anymore. We don't have the Jans Ranch, the Borchard Ranch, the Newberry's Ranch. We don't have any of those, but we still have the McCray Ranch, some of the McCray <laughs> Ranch. And uh, it's, it's a nice thing as for the heritage of our family. And I don't think it would really be happening if you weren't there, Wyatt. Um, I know Harvey and I often talk about, well, what's going to happen when I is not around? <laughs> I think you'll be there for several more years, but thank you for all of your hard work. And I know that you're a huge inspiration to the docents. I know a lot of them are there because of you. So anyway, well, thank, thank you. Thank you. I hope we'll all be back at the Cowboy Cookout and I'll be trying to sell everybody some raffle <laughs> That's tickets. Right. And we need you out there to sell <laughs> raffle tickets. Thank, thank you, you, Director Kessworth. I appreciate that. I, uh, it's I often wonder what's going to happen when I'm gone too, but uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll get something arranged before then, so some sort of succession plan. But it is a constant challenge, though, to to keep the ranch, you know, in in a in a state of uh, presentability, uh, and and yet we don't have the money to do it all at once. So we're we're doing as much as we can at one time and and uh, continuing on from there. But but it it's. Uh, it's my desire not to bring it above anything beyond original condition. We want to just keep it at original condition the way my grandparents had it when they were there. And, and much like you said, it, uh, you know, there are certain things that they wouldn't have certain ways if they were living there. So I, I try and make it as, as homey and as, as, uh, as if they just, you know, walked out the door yesterday and, and just left, left it the way it is. So. I know who your replacement will be. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> well, she she uh, she will definitely play a big role in it. I hope it already does. Actually, Yo, I so, know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Director Nichols. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Why? Always good to hear from you and the activities that are going on out there. As you were talking about the refurbishment, <clears throat> I just was reflecting how I uh, just stopped at the Harris Ranch a couple weeks ago for lunch with my son-in-law and got to talking about the, the, the ranch era of California, right. uh, Tejon Ranch, Mission Viejo Ranch, you know, Harris Ranch. And, and while the McCray Ranch may not have been at that, that size, nonetheless, it, it's still part of that era. Right. And you know, to have that legacy here in our own community is such a, a rich resource. And so I appreciate your efforts to kind of keep us locals informed on the heritage be that came before us and yet still being able to touch it and feel it and be a part of that. Uh, you know, it's, it's rare to have that type of a resource. So uh, I just feel privileged to be able to partner with you and the foundation. And I think, you know, the, the uh, park district sees that as just another outreach, another opportunity. And, you know, there's not many opportunities like that. And so, so when we have that type of facility, we certainly want to maintain it where it's usable. Uh, and then one last note, I can remember going out to Colorado Springs years and years ago, and our, our relatives took us out to a cowboy dinner and uh, evening before the place burned down, uh, again, just a couple decades ago. That was the first time I learned the difference between a cowboy event and a Western event. And so I look forward to that cowboy heritage <laughs> being retained here and rather going to the CMA awards type of uh, review. So thank you for retaining that for us. Well, thank you for those comments, Director Nichols. I appreciate that. We are trying to keep things authentic. We, we don't necessarily want to go the CMA route. That's for sure. We're trying to, trying to stay more cowboy, you know, but uh, uh, it, it is a group effort and, and it's, uh, it's due to all of you in this room, you know, all the employees at the district, uh, 
our, our docents and volunteers. I mean, it, it takes an army to make all this work, that's for sure. And, and we are very proud of the fact that, uh, uh, that, you know, we are kind of the last standing example of, of what ranches in this area used to be like. And, and a lot of people don't know, we, we got a lot of pressure early on in the you know, 80s and early 90s to, to develop and do all that sort of thing. And, and I'm very proud of the fact that we didn't go that route and we ended up preserving what, uh, what is left of the ranch. And, and I think it is a, a great asset for the community to be able to see that, that era in time. Okay, Director Holt. Well, I just want to, first of all, it's great to see you. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see you too. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the presentation. We always welcome the information. And can't wait, can't even talk. Can't <laughs> wait until we can get back, um, you know, at some events at the McCray Ranch. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Director Hall. Thank you. I don't know, but okay. <laughs> Mr. Hare. No, it, it was paved later on in the 40s, actually, in the mid 40s, early to mid 40s. I don't know the exact year, but uh, but yeah, it was a gravel road going up there originally, and then uh, and then it was it was paved fairly early on, though. My granddad didn't want to get stuck going up to the house, so he, he paved it as soon as, as soon as he could. But uh, but yeah, it was it was roughly about 10 years after he bought the ranch. Yeah, yeah. you're welcome. And the, but the last time it was repaved, the last time it had been uh, kind of ground and repaved was in 1984. So that's the last time anything had been done to the road. So, so you know, it held up pretty well given that that period of time. But, uh, Thank you, Mr. Hare. That was going to be my question. <laughs> the, the material well, you that you use. again. You know, <laughs> the material that you use for the, the road and, and so forth. Asphalt. Yeah, yeah it's, it's asphalt. This, this how, about, is, how thick? This is a simple overlay, about an inch thick. So we didn't we didn't have the money to completely grind it and take it down to base and rebuild it. So uh, this is this is about an inch on top of. They filled all the holes, took all the loose stuff out, and then laid an inch on top of that. So it's uh, it's it's an overlay, but uh, but it's much better and will last much longer than what was there for sure. So yeah. Now yeah. down down around the bunkhouse, we did grind that and and build that back up. That's got about two inches of asphalt on the, on it. So yeah. And your comment about it to be left just as if your grandparents had just walked out the door. Mm -hmm. I got to thinking of when we first toured the property and when we were considering uh, working on our deal. Um, and we went up to the main house. Right. And then it just kind of felt that way and smelled that way with just a, a real experience and that was and you know there was the well and the pool and everything it just kind of helped sell the idea of getting involved with the, the Cray family and so forth so well thank you director Lang and it and it was kind of that way because my grandmother was still around then and she right. she had just walked out of the house so That's right. <laughs> it was pretty authentic at that point yeah. <laughs> um, the interior paint uh, in the different rooms, was that uh, as close to the original colors? We, we tried to match the original colors as close as we could get. We, they took samples. What the, the issue we ran into, uh, Director Lang, was in, in certain parts closer to the windows, the paint had faded quite a, quite a bit. And you got into other parts of the room behind, behind pictures and that sort of thing, it was much darker. So we we actually tried to tried to kind of blend those two so that it would it would match as closely as possible to the whole room. Yeah, so, yeah we've it, whenever we've done anything like that, like when we did the drapes several years ago, we've always tried to find same colors, same patterns, uh, it, and it's amazing what you can find these days. But yeah. uh, and we were able to find exact patterns and, and exact materials that were uh, match the originals perfectly. So we we've always tried to keep things as authentic as we possibly could. So. Great. And when you're doing the outside um, of the main house, mm -hmm. was there much uh, rot or materials that had to be replaced? There, there was a little bit on one side uh, uh, that the that the uh, maintenance people from the district came out and handled. Uh, there was there was about uh, eight or ten sideboards um, off of the washroom area that. Uh, that had where water had leaked from pipes in the past, and and some of the bottom of those siding uh, siding boards had uh, had some dry rot in it, so we replaced those. Other than that, that's that's all we had to replace. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. Yeah. 
And no, there, well, the, the wood back then was, was much better than it is today. So most of it has held up very, very well. So. Well, again, echoing the comments of the other board members, uh, good report. We appreciate the information um, and we appreciate you and the relationship we all enjoy and working together to make this, as Director Cutsworth was saying, this is a real special uh, part of the Caneo Valley in, a, in our history. And sitting on that porch, I'll have to agree, that's a, a nice view and those rocking chairs are comfortable too. Well, it, it takes you it takes you back a few decades, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but no, I appreciate that the the partnership between between the foundation, the McCray Ranch Foundation, and the Park District has been uh, unequaled. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better partner. This has just been a wonderful wonderful relationship, and and we're very appreciative of all the Park District has done to to keep the property in shape for sure. So, yeah. and to perpetuate the the history of it. And I don't know if you recall or attended some of the meetings when we were going through the discussion process, but Director Berger at the time wanted to have a fishing lake around the well out in that area. And uh, we, it got some, you know, consideration, but uh, decided that would not be a, a good use of the property in the expense and so forth. Mike and I had several discussions about that over the years. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down to the historical perspective, really, and, really, and trying to keep the field as it had been historically, as opposed yeah. to, to trying to bring in a new use. He was looking at um, a method to raise funds, bring kids out there to fish right. in the lake and you know picnics and so forth. So that was his idea and so forth. And again, you kept it the way it was uh, when your grandpa is farming it so we, we came to a good compromise yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay with that uh again thanks thank, thank you. you we're moving on to, to see both of you soon I'm working. we're moving on to item number four items from the public and we have mr public scott buchanan Thank you, Director Lang and the board and staff over there. I am Scott Buchanan from Thousand Oaks. I'm the cultural program supervisor, Hillcrest Center for the Arts. Just wanted to take the opportunity to show you a short two minute video of how we kept the arts alive during the pandemic. So we'll play the video. You're so stubborn. Tell me I'm wrong. Reasonable, just. <laughs> I'm from the UK. I now live in America. I, I've actually lived here for uh, three and a half years, pretty much. Um, I basically straight after my country voted for a thing called Brexit. I was like, that. I want to live in a country with a much more stable political climate. So I'm here now. Um. Thank you. Okay. 
Thanks, Scott. And thank you, Scott, for keeping those programs going. That's very important for our youth in the community. Moving on to item five, approval of the agenda. I move approval. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any comments or changes? If not, let's see, Elaine's not here. So I will go ahead and say all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Item six, consent calendar A and B. Approval of the minutes for October 15th and approval of the warrants uh, per the staff report. The information is there. I'd entertain a motion of uh, A and B. Thank you, Director Cutsworth. Thank you, Director Hupper. I apologize. I got caught by surprise and something in my mouth. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve consent calendar. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Hearing none, that motion will pass. Item seven, deferred matters. Uh, we have none. Item eight, items for discussion. And we do have our regular CRPD update regarding COVID-19 by Mr. General Manager Friedel. Yes, thank you, Chair Lang, members of the board. Uh, not so much different than what you'll see on the most recent Friday, you know, GM update. Um, we have in fact dropped from red back to purple, the most restrictive tier, most of California, except for maybe three or four counties are in purple. Um, I did just hear an interview with the county CEO and health officer to explain what they're attributing to the most recent rise in the caseload in our county um, is due to, and they basically both described it as, as gatherings, not the workplace or business so much. So when they try to figure out how is it that the cases are climbing so rapidly, they're not finding that places of work that are, you know, kind of ongoing and operating and sort of have systems in place to do safety protocols, et cetera. Um, that's not where spread is coming from. It's largely coming from gatherings, and that is a very amorphous term, but essentially it can be any reason multiple people are together. Um, you know, Halloween is, I think, getting the, the wrap for the most recent kind of uptick starting. You know, a lot of people just said, hey, it's Halloween and we got to do our thing, and a lot of people just gathered socially for that reason. So there is, uh, I guess, a rising caseload yet again. So that led to what I just heard, as you may have as well, just this afternoon, the governor has now issued a soft curfew. I would characterize it as a soft curfew. So for the next month, um, effective in all the purple counties, which would be us, all gatherings with members of other households and all activities outside of your residence, lodging or temporary accommodation with members of the other households shall cease between 10 and 5, 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. So I, I, that doesn't affect me. <laughs> I'm not a, a night owl anymore, but uh, I know there are people that do that, except for activities associated with the operation, maintenance and usage of critical infrastructure or as otherwise required by law. So, Basically, it's a, it's what I would characterize as a soft curfew because the order does not apply if you are outside of your household during that time and not otherwise gathering. So you can, I guess, go out for a midnight jog or something if you choose. That's not something they're contemplating. They really just, I think they're trying to get at the bars, essentially. Nighttime gatherings um, is kind of their, people start drinking, the masks come down and you know as the alcohol goes in the inhibitions kind of come off and i think that's what they're focusing on um how does that affect crpd itself um some of these orders this going from from red back to purple not as much as you would think not as much as the last time we were in purple so we actually are able to do most of which we started to do when we had um 
you know, dropped from purple to red and we added a few more things we could do. So for example, they haven't tried to reclose the playgrounds. They haven't tried to, um, you know, stop uh, some of the classes and programs that we've reopened, but indoor um, community center space is still not open to the general public and indoor fitness programs that we once we had started doing again indoor fitness is suspended we can no longer do indoor fitness so that's kind of how it affects us primarily and then in terms of our staff this is the the greatest news i'm just thrilled we have as of right now as i'm speaking there are no current known cases no one is quarantining and no one is in isolation so that i don't know that that's been the case for months, like we've always had somebody who is, you know, exposed to a somebody or a known contact or something. And so somebody was always seemingly isolating or something, but uh, this is this is great news. So um, for, for us right now, Sierra PD staff, we're excited about that. I attribute that to the hard work and creativity of the staff by continuing to do things. Scott's little snippet right there is just kind of the example of we're doing all sorts of crazy stuff to try to do something that brings some people together in a way that's compliant with the health orders and and all those safety protocols and stuff I think are keeping keeping us safe. So thanks. Thanks to staff for doing all they do to make it work. So that's our COVID update. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. Mr. Chair. Yes. I have one question. If I yes, could. please. Uh, thank you for that update, Mr. Friedel. A quick question. You mentioned that they, the, the, you were on a, a, I guess, a Zoom meeting or a phone call with the county officials. No, uh, I actually just heard it on the radio. <laughs> oh, about the gatherings? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you heard information firsthand or secondhand. No, it was an interview on KCLU. So it was an interview of the health officer. And Oh, okay. So, so I, yeah. I just was curious how they deduced that information that is from gatherings if they had some data to support that or was that just guesstimating? I don't know if they... I, I didn't hear that part of the interview, but I do believe they are, when they are finding people testing positive, they're doing some level of contact tracing, trying to find like, you know, how, who should we be talking to now that you're, you know, exposed and it doesn't go back to the workplace. It's typically going back to some gathering, I think is the way I, I believe they're getting that info. But I could I could try to dig into that. And well, I just thought if you, if, if you were there, I thought maybe you had heard, but if not, no, that's fine. No. We can all just look on the news and yeah. find whatever we're looking for. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you for the question, Director Nichols. We're going on to uh, new items, item 9A, uh, amendment number one to contract with Andrew Goodwin Designs at, in the amount of $190,761 for phase three of environmental landscape architectural and architectural services for Canejo Community Park and Center Improvements. Mr. Hare. Yes, uh, thanks uh, Chair Lang, members of the board. Uh, back in June, this board authorized uh, AGD, uh, Andrew Goodwin Designs, uh, about $137,000 for phase one and two to develop some schematic plans. Uh, since that time, they've done a, quite a bit of work working alongside with staff. They've done some site visits, some surveys, tree assessments, um, and then they've presented to us a couple of times. We've you know, gone back and forth with them. Um, they've refined their schematic plans. Um, and also they've uh, also worked, did do to, to some preliminary work on the environmental documents for the initial study and the mitigated negative declaration. Um, and from that and is attachment A, which we'll, we'll get into um, some some pretty pretty pictures, of which uh, Andrew Mooney here will do the, the, the presentation. Uh, but from this, now we're going on to the next step. So we presented all of this to staff. We've also presented this with numerous meetings to the public and to our stakeholders. Very well received, and I believe we had. I think almost I think all of you might have been on some of the Zoom meetings we had with the public. So I appreciate you attending those, but uh, we and even Andrew and I have met on site with a, a few folks who had some additional questions there. Again, very well received, very positive reaction from everybody. Some good questions too that people have had, um, but we're excited to move on to the next phase. Um, and the next phase would be phase three for, de for design development. And if you remember the way we structured this is it's gonna go in phases. So after each phase, 
uh, we would come back to the board saying, this is where we're at this and we will do public uh, outreach and, and talk to the neighbors and stakeholders and, and, and talk to staff before we continue on to the following phase, which would be construction documents. So we're very excited uh, to present to you some pretty pretty pictures and uh, oh there he is yeah, and, the and, and, a, and a pretty guy um, <laughs> oh. yeah and he's gonna he's gonna tell you and this is per, this is and for those of you who did attend the public meetings um, this is a fairly similar to those presentations we gave to the public so again feel free to ask any questions at any time and because Andrew will know the answers and then if you with that I give you the Andrew Miller. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hare. Um, Mark, if you can just do screen. view full screen. Yeah. I would just make it as big as possible. Thank you. Um, so to kind of orientate you, um, we're looking at the overall property of uh, Caneo Community Center Park, sorry, Caneo Community Park. Um, on the left side, uh, there is a, a roadway just outside of the, the rendered trees. That's Gainesboro Road. And uh, the overall orientation is north is up on this plan, uh, as well as to the right. So mid, mid um, page, but all the way on the right margin, that is Dover Hendricks. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Dover Hendricks uh, intersection there. So just a little bit further to the right. Yep, right there. And so just to kind of give, give you a little bit of uh, reference point, um, we are looking at um, basically three main components of, of the work. Um, based on all the outreach and, and uh, meetings that we've held the past year, as Mr. Hare mentioned. Um, so those three components are, is a need for a new center building, uh, as well as a, a restroom and ground shed on the west side of the property. Um, we also have some various amenities throughout the park site, um, including a, a, a passive but permanent stage structure, uh, a bridge crossing the existing swale, and then kind of uh, naturalizing, if you will, the shoulders and, and vegetation on, on the boundary of the swale, because it's still going to continue to um, convey water through the site from the, from the storm drains from the streets, um, as well as a picnic area, and, and then improving but keeping the existing playground, but expanding it um, slightly and, and improving it. Um, and then we also have circulation through the site. So there's some vehicular with a parking lot. Uh, as well as pedestrian um, circulation pathways and, and, and such through, through the whole site. Um, so the, again, the, the big item um, is really the new center. So at the bottom right of the page, you see the white. Um, that is the footprint of the new, new proposed building. Um, it is a two-story building. So we're taking advantage of uh, one, the great trees we have on site. So to be able to provide provide the footprint that the public has uh, requested and shown need for, um, we were saying, hey, how can we fit this? How, how how can we fit this into this awesome park site without taking away the greatness of the park site, which is including a lot of mature trees, uh, really really interesting topography with summer concerts and and kind of the natural earthen bowl that we have there. Um, and so we're, we kind of took a look at it with the architectural team and, and um, said, hey, let's work into the slope. So basically, it's a, think of it kind of as a split level home. Um, so at the existing upper parking lot where we have the turnaround near the playground at the staircase, that is kind of the first, first level of the building. And then the second level, and I'll show you some elevations and some plans and walk you through that in more detail. But it's really, again, the, the idea is taking advantage of this great park site without taking away from this park site. Um, and so with that, we're, we're orientating the building. So it's centered on to the new uh, passive stage location that is basically the same location, but, but a little shifted from the, where the existing temporary stage gets set up for the concerts. And then if you go um, to the west parking lot off of Janine Drive, there is a small white rectangular building that is the same location of the existing restroom buildings. Um, those buildings have been there for quite some time. We're taking a look at uh, updating the restrooms as well as being able to offer a ground shed for just better service of the park and some space for our staff to be able to, to serve the park site. And then as you go a little bit further to the left, which is west, you'll see some um, 
more kind of passive pa uh, pathways that are walking through some new some new uh, planting. And again, this is schematic phase, so it's it's still pretty loose. We're still getting into the details of it, um, but we're we're looking at being able to kind of create connections to the neighborhood. If you guys are familiar with, the, there's Redwood Middle School just to the north up Gainesboro Road. So um, trying to create access through the site. So there's some people that might be walking through the park site every day in normal times when they're going to school. So being able to uh, use it as a corridor for the community, but then also be able to provide provide amenities with that. Um, so if you wanna go to the next page, Mark. Um, so here are some um, 3D views of the architecture. So as you can see, it's a, a two-story building. Again, um, one thing that was very interesting as we kind of worked through this was we have this great park site, but we don't have any windows in the existing center building. So we definitely wanted to take advantage of that view shed um, for just you know everyday views of people taking classes and things, but then also from event standpoint of uh, hosting the concerts and, and other um, larger events there for the public. Um, the bottom left corner um, view is actually the view from the upper parking lot. So again, that's the existing grade of the upper parking lot now, um, walking into the front door of the center. So um, the center, again, two stories. The, the second floor is actually the more active uh, floor. So that has offices and, and the, the classrooms and such. Um, and then if you kind of look at, I'm trying to find the best picture, um, probably either the Northwest aerial. So it's kind of the top right uh, photo, second from the top right, or the center below uh, from view from the playground, you can kind of see how it's built into the slope. So again, really trying to take an advantage of the existing site topography, um, not trying to shoehorn this in in between trees, however, not staying away from the mature trees so we're not affecting them with the root systems and, and such. Um, and then Mark, if you wanna to go to the next, so this is the uh, floor plan. Uh, the second floor uh, plan, again, is the active. So the upper, upper of the two on the page, you walk into a, a central lobby of double doors from starting from the bottom center, walking into the building. To the left, there's an open reception area, as well as some private offices for the full-time staff. Um, and then to the right, there's an open staircase. Uh, as well as a, a corridor that takes you down to the restrooms and the elevator. Um, and then to the left, we'll take you to the classrooms. So we, we currently have two classes there now. Um, we intend to keep those two classes there, but basically just give them a little bit more space, a little bit more storage, um, as well as a, uh, an attached restroom. So that's something that, that was uh, um, looked at from, from uh, just the programming standpoint of, uh, walking a, a three to three to five year old down the hall to, to use the restroom because that's the existing situation for one of the classrooms. Um, so really just trying to make, make the situation better for the users. Um, and then as you walk back to the main lobby corridor, you go through the, the double doors into the large multi-purpose room um, that opens up to a, a, a patio. Um, the square footage is roughly between those two areas, basically the, the same square footage as the existing multi-purpose room. And then we have a secondary classroom multi-purpose room to the right through the double doors that has its own uh, private um, overlook deck as well. Um, and then at the end of the hall, we have some storage. And so as we go back to the central lobby and walk down the stairs, we'll take, we'll take you down into the lower lobby and then that will open you up into the um, secondary multi-purpose room, um, as well as some storage for staff as far as, uh, and mechanical, but as far as uh, recreation programming, and tables and chairs and such. And then we also have a kitchen to the right. So you walk through the kitchen and then there's also uh, a restroom. So the unique thing with this site is the restroom is accessible indoors and out. Um, so right now when there's no staff in the building, the building's locked. So there's no bathroom on that whole east side and, and kind of central main part of the park. And the goal is to be able to, when staff will not be there, they can lock it off and it will still be open to the public either on a weekend or holiday when some, when some folks are, are still using our park. Um, so the goal again is to kind of, hey, uh, improve upon what we have there and, and make it more usable for the community to use. Um, and we do have a, a couple exterior staircases uh, to take you up and down the, um, the deck 
off the back that overlooks the uh, existing uh, sloped turf kind of amphitheater area. Uh, so with that, Tom and I are available for questions. Thank you, Andrew. Yes, Director Cusworth. So I just have a question. I was at the park the other day and originally you said the building that's there now is not going to be torn down during the construction of the other building. Is that correct? Uh, that's in, so in, incorrect. We, we actually, we're looking to, the, the buildings do overlap, the footprints do overlap, um, but we don't know all the answers to construction. We're, we're, we're really into the phase of trying to figure out what the building's going to be and what the improvements will be. And that's in later stages that we're going to be planning and kind of scheduling to see. We don't know if, if folks are going to be on site or we're going to move them over to another, another center or things like that with temporary buildings and such. Because the only question I had was um, with that, as I was trying to look at the existing building and then I was trying to imagine this building coming in there and there's a couple of really big oak trees. And you mentioned several times that you don't want to disturb these two oak trees. And you probably know the oak trees I'm talking about. Yep. And they kind of have a huge overhang on them. So that's what I was confused because I thought, how are you going to get smash this building in between this oak tree and this building? So at this point, are you thinking you might remove an oak tree or are you thinking you might remove a building or you're just not sure where you're going with this? No, we're not, we're not looking to remove those oak trees. Um, okay. We will be removing the building. So like I said, okay. there's an overlap, uh, basically the front office and, and one of the preschool rooms is that's kind of the, the overlap between the new and the old buildings. Okay, so, so. okay, so that just clears that up. Uh, Cause I thought that originally the building was staying, but maybe not. Okay, and so all gender bathroom, I guess that just means you have doors on everything. Correct. Because it looks like there's doors so anybody can go in and they close the door like you're in your house. Cause Correct. we all have all gender bathrooms in our house. Except Correct. for my mother's house, who wouldn't let my brothers in the bathroom she used, but that was not an all-gender bathroom. <laughs> but okay, so I was just wanting to clarify that it looked like you had all doors, but people get kind of nervous about that sort of thing. So, yeah. so the 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 only the sinks would be shared. Correct. Okay. Include your question? Um, I think that concludes my questions. Hopefully, I don't think of other things while people are talking, but yeah, okay. sometimes you all spur my questions, but I'll just try to stay quiet. Well, you no, you don't have to okay. stay quiet. You can come back. All right. Director Huffer. Yeah, first of all, it's 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 really exciting to see visually what it is you're you're thinking about. So um, you know, not not just the the uh, plans, second first and second floor plans, but you know, some, some pictures of what, what you're looking at conceptually. Um, the uh, van, van shell is going to be a, a permanent structure or is it just, is it just a pad? Uh, it's going to be a slightly elevated pad. If you think of it that way, we, we might frame it with some boulders and things like that to tie in some of the materials for the new development and, and that. Um, but it's it's very very passive. Okay, but we would we would still summertime for the concerts. We still would be bringing in the, the portable van shell then, right? No, no, the intent is no. So the intent would be that that, but that's a t TBD kind of to be determined item for us. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we're thinking, Chuck. We're thinking uh, uh, trying to make feel like we're the stage. Mm -hmm. The hard part would be there, and so we you know, we're talking with uh, uh, Scott and, and uh, some of the ACCD folks, it's just like, what do you need to actually come in, basically plug and play? You, know, hook, you just hook things up and there'll be electrical or uh, audio or whatever needs to be there. But then on a daily basis, it will just be like an elevated, uh, uh, elevated natural looking as possible stage that you could do, we could do things every single day there. So on the, on the days of the concert, I'm, just, I'm trying to picture, would, would there be some kind of temporary back put in on the stage? Could, could be, yep, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever is needed. Yeah, whatever is needed will, whether, whether it's a, a temporary thing or it's something already permanent there, would, again, it's all to be determined, but this is, we're gonna try to make it as uh, the location as permanent and um, usable on a daily basis as possible 
but yet have the contracts can come in and whatever it's, a, you know, it's a temporary equipment that's brought in just for the day, but not the whole uh, giant portable stage. Okay. And then someone here or one of the presentations you made along the way, you'd mentioned that there are going to be some um, modifications to the baseball field. Correct. Yeah. So uh, currently, I think the field is, uh, and I won't say dimensions, but we, we need about 10 to 15 more feet for them to use that as an official Little League tournament field. So, and they're, they typically operate out of Fiore and for their tournaments. And so to be able to get, uh, give the opportunity for another field, we look to push the fence back. And so there'll be a small retaining wall and, and some landscaping work and fencing to, to accommodate that. So yes, that is a part of this project. Okay. All right. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you, Director Hopton. Director Holt. Um, I, I was wondering, too about these all gender bathrooms and um, of course most of the time that I have been there not all I mean I I live close to here but um, the if we've had concerts etc first of all there are never enough bathrooms I mean the lines to the bathrooms that exist now even with a porta potty or not a porta potty whatever they put outside that you know people can use but um, is this a new trend, this all gender type of, uh, you know, bathroom? I, I just. So, that... yes, uh, more than a trend. However, though, because of uh, um, inclusivity through building code, um, there, there are requirements to be able to offer um, whether uh, a third, a third gender restroom. So this is a way to more efficiently address address that item and then so it's it's you're sharing sinks versus sharing uh there there would be, have to be a possibly third bathroom really in the building so it's yeah. it's really trying to be address it as efficiently as possible um so everyone can be included into well, a i guess as as uh the director uh Cussworth. Cussworth brought up <laughs> that um there'd be doors on everything because i mean men's rooms are different from Ladies' rooms. How do you know? Uh, because I know. Okay. <laughs> Think of it as a toilet room, though. It's basically it, well, it, it's individual in, toilet rooms with yeah, a full door. Individual toilet yeah, rooms. Yep. I mean, that makes a difference then, because men's rooms are yeah. different from ladies' and, rooms. And we still anticipate, you know, it, for concerts because of the size of the crowd that we would to get an extra. We one. would still have porta potties. Yeah, we've had. Yeah. Yeah. we have to. We've done that. Okay, any more questions, Director Holt? No. Okay, thank you. Director Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hare and Mr. Mooney for the presentation and also for the materials. This is very helpful as we continue to, to ramp up and build up this project. <clears throat> A couple of uh, questions. What is the ex extent of the total grading over the entire site. I know there's going to be something for little trails and things like that, but aside from the footprint of the building, is there any significant grading that will occur throughout the park in its entirety? Uh, fairly minimal other than the parking lot and the building. So, and and we are balancing, cut, cut and fill, I mean, get, getting into the details, we are balancing. The, the intention is to balance cut and fill on site. Okay. So, parking lot, that's just kind of an elevational type of thing just to try and get to the right elevation to grade. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Is there any significant grading for the baseball field for that minor extension? But, yeah. I mean, minimal. We, there, will, there will be a retaining wall, but but minimal. So it seems like large, more about large, import. A large part of the fence is just a matter of just moving the fence. There's just a few areas that correct. Where you need to do something. Okay. And then I guess just for the trail that goes over by Gainesboro. It's just the, uh, the trail bed itself, I presume. Yep. Okay. All right. And uh, this might be you know, something for Ms. Callis to jump into, too. With the proposed layout of the multipurpose rooms, top and bottom, and the three classrooms on the second floor, with the facility that we have now, I don't want to say our current program, I'll say our traditional programming, uh, with what we've traditionally programmed at the site, will this expand that by certain percentage? You know, we'll leave that for your estimate. 
or is it kind of a status quo or just making it nicer? How does this affect uh, traditional versus perhaps future program? So it's adding a couple of rooms on, so they'll be able to expand on um, what they're doing. So, okay, so percentage-wise, I don't know. It's, it'll depend on what we're able to do when it is all done. But I mean, yeah, it is the same preschool rooms, but bigger, so we'll be able to add more kids. You've got the one multi-purpose room. There's one upstairs and one downstairs, so it almost, I think it's almost a double on the multi-purpose room. Uh, it's just under double. We, we have about 3,000 square feet interior space upstairs, and then we have, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, and then the way we're able to divide the upstairs into two rooms, we'll be able to utilize it for two classrooms instead. So. Okay, so there will be some additional flexibility in mm -hmm. space, just basically. Oh, absolutely. Space. Okay, so that, yeah. that's a good thing. Oh, absolutely. And that's yeah. the key word, uh, Doug, that we, we that with the rec staff came up. They wanted the flexibility. Yes, yes. They said, they said, yeah, with the existing building, they just said, you know, hey, this is what we got. Book. Sure. Sorry. sorry. Now they can say, oh, we'll put you downstairs, we'll put you over there, or whatever. Right. So it's right. a lot, lot more use for the flexibility. Sure. Yeah, and I also see you've got uh, the north deck, an outdoor workspace, a patio, which can also be incorporated, perhaps not always during the weather, but uh, periodically. So I do, I do believe there's a lot, of, lot more flexibility here, which is a good thing. Okay. Uh, as far as the phasing, phase one, phase two, phase three, this being a recommendation to authorize moving into uh, phase three, what is the current status of phase one and phase two, and how do you track that to check all the boxes and say everything is done, everything's on target, everything's on budget? How do we stand with those two phases? So. We phase phase one was really over the summer of them of them getting information like Tom mentioned, uh, site survey, uh, tree reports, and and starting that and assessing the site, the existing site, as well as meeting with staff and to kind of get the program going. And and like you mentioned with with uh, your discussion with Rochelle, is hey, what's what's the need here? How how are we interpreting the size of the building, et cetera? And then the schematic plan, uh, the schematic which is phase two is is closed based on the plans that we're showing you now. So based on a schematic level four plan, as well as a schematic level site plan and, and some 3D renderings of the building to really kind of get the idea and the aesthetic of it. Um, if, and, and then also the beginnings of the environmental document. So we've been in, in coordination with, um, with the uh, consulting environmental uh, group to uh, begin that, and then so in phase, and so that's that's they've begun their assessment based based on the direction of your guys's previously approved um, contract. Yeah, it, it, Doug, they have a uh, when they in, well, part of their initial proposal, it might say X amount of hours, Y amount of dollars for this particular item. So it's it's broken down pretty you know, pretty detailed in the proposal. And then when they invoice us, that's how we can tell you. It's, oh, okay, they said 100 hours for this. They're on 50 hours. Okay, they're halfway done with that particular item. So yeah, they once as far as like you're saying, check boxes, knowing where they are is when they're when they say they're done. And like some of them, they went up a little over on this for certain reasons because we told we asked them to do, and some of them they went a little under. But yeah, so that's how we kind of uh, numerically check where they are. Yeah, I just was curious because you know, obviously in project management, you know, you look at the project chart and you've got these bars going right. across all these different time frames, certain things starting and stopping in different schedules. None of them come to a complete halt at phase two, nor at phase three. There's usually a, there's usually a blending. So that's why I was curious that how are you as, as our representatives able to track and say, oh yeah, we're we're right where we're supposed to be, even though you know there's this blending moving from one phase to the next. Yeah, and then, and then we, we specifically asked them to be hey, very broken down by phases. And when we do, uh, if we just did a, uh, this was a smaller contract, say to, like when we did uh, Canary Creek Southwest, and it's just like, hey, we want here, the board awarded a contract that goes from A to Z. Mm -hmm. And so that would, that's when you get into the more, you know, hey, phase one plunge to two, and this go a little behind here, but they go to their head here. But here we said, no, we want you, Tell us what. Tell us when the stop is here. The stop is here. The stop is here. The stop is there. So that's where we'll be able to track it uh, better. Okay, and and uh, obviously you wouldn't be bringing this to us if you weren't satisfied with where we were with phase one and phase two. Correct. Correct. 
Very sad. Okay. Okay. And then with, I was looking at the uh, contract extension, or I guess amendment would be the appropriate term for it, where there are some different descriptions and it refers to different percentages, uh, 10%, 30%, 90%, uh, like 30% level construction details. With where we are at now, uh, for example, we see this wonderful rendering of the, uh, of the exterior and we have floor plans. What percentage level are we on these? Is this, you know, I, I presume we're not at the end, otherwise it would be done, but uh, you know, we definitely have something that looks like it's doable. So when it comes to the architecture, uh, is this exactly the way it's gonna look like? Are we 100% or is this just like, hey, some guy tried to put things together and we're, we're saying it's 10% because all the details need to be working out. Where do we stand with that as far as what we're seeing on these, uh, these renderings right now? Yeah, so the, as far as from that, that's the schematic package. However, that is a very good general direction of the project. So yes, the storage might get a little bigger on the floor plan, right? Hey, glass might get a little smaller because structural tells them this beam needs to be this big and you're gonna block some glass. So why show a beam with, with a glass window, right? So there's, that, that's really, DD is a, a good chunk of a lot of that stuff gets figured out. And then CD goes through polishing and, and building department submittals. Um, so, I mean, it's a ballpark, I would say you're probably, and it's it, it 10, I would say 15, 15 to 20% there roughly over the whole course of the project when you get into kind of the details of it. But what you see there is a very, very good general direction of what that building is going to look like in the future with, with those minor details tweaks based on, you know, structural, electrical, building apartment, and, and things of that nature. Okay. And I, I don't think I was actually able to attend any of these Zoom meetings for this, but I just was curious. I just reflect back on the meetings we had at the center. I was able to go to those, and uh, Mr. Hare was up there explaining how this was the best house in the neighborhood, which I would concur. It kind of, kind of has that feel to it. And now this is going to have a whole different look and feel to it. Has there been from the neighbors in that thinking of more, mostly in the immediate area, that this seems to still fit that bill or is there, has there been any concern expressed as to, yeah, this is not going to be what I had in mind. Has there been any feelings expressed one way or the other as far as the uh, proposals that we've seen here? Yeah, so uh, oh, I would say overly positive, just like the, the site plan in the building. Of course, you're going to have uh, comments here and there um, from from select folks, but as far as the the style of the building, it's actually kind of uh, tipping a nod to the Eichler homes in the neighborhood, and and some folks it, it took oh yeah it makes sense kind of thing because it clicks because some of the immediate homes are are more kind of ranch, ranch style and they don't have as much of that that kind of contemporary mid century flavor, um, but that that was the intent and uh, overall very positive received. I think it was uh, more the conversation is about kind of the use and, and things like that versus the, the look and feel of the building. It's really how, how is this building and park improvement going to support what, what we do as a, as a community? Well, ultimately, that's what business we're in is providing services and, uh, and having functional facilities is essential. It's nice to have them look appropriate, of course, uh, but I definitely think the use is the key part. So, yeah, that appreciate that. I think that might be Question. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think that was, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the time. Okay. I'm going to go ahead first. Well, I'm sorry. I was, That's okay. I'm through. All Thank you, Director Nichols. And before I make comments and ask questions, I was remiss without thanking um, Mr. Wyatt McCray for this little gift of the 2021 calendar uh, that's a perfect size for sneaking it on my desk without the, the big one. So, so thank you. Um, I did go to at least one, I, mean, I can't remember, maybe two Zoom meetings. I don't know if you picked up, you and Andrew were at the table by yourselves. And at that meeting, there was one woman who at least twice and maybe three times was concerned about that large oak tree to the northwest corner of the existing building. 
and as a regular attendee to the concerts, that is a very popular oak tree. That's and she, apparently she didn't understand some of the comments because when she came back, maybe it was the second time, she was concerned that you were gonna remove it. And you tried to assure her that that tree would not be removed. So if I understand correctly, and then also an answer to question Director Cusworth talked, there's not gonna be any uh, major trees uh, removed except those by the parking lot? Correct. Yeah, the intent is to, to keep all, all those large mature trees as, as best we can and, and currently correct. Okay, good. Um, there's been a number of questions, but I, something else had come to mind. Okay, I'm gonna ask a question about um, the first floor a couple things I don't understand. At the, from the lobby, there's no entrance from the south because that's yeah, that's dirt. built in. That's built into the slope, so yeah, that that baseline dirt. is completely built into the slope of the of the existing parking lot. Okay, so um, it's called a lobby because you come down the stairs from the second floor into a space, and then. There's no desk or anything like that as a lobby as a lot of our rec centers have. That's upstairs. Correct, yeah. So the intent is that would be more of a kind of, instead of walking down into a parking garage staircase and you just go fall right into the room, the intent was to kind of keep keep the staircase open and airy with light. There's actually a skylight that will be bringing, bringing uh, natural light into that space as well as the lobby. Um, and there, there would be some seating, but kind of a staging. So if there was an event going on or a class or seminar, there would be a, a opportunity where there could be a sign in desk and things like that. Um, and then, or for an event to kind of, you know, have some space for people to stay outside of the, the event space. We, we try to balance George on the, I guess initially I think their plan it was a little smaller because they're saying, let's give you some more square footage where it counts. And mm -hmm. said, no, this actually counts. So, cause we did like, uh, Andrew's saying we didn't want people to go down and go like I got to get out of here and like go into the room so yeah. open it up just a little bit but not too much but just a little bit so it's a uh, like yeah sit down on a couch or like have a check-in station or something like that okay a kitchen is down there at the first floor and I don't maybe Rochelle has would have the information how uh, often would this kitchen be used and would it be used for functions both on the first level and the second level? Yes, it would be used for both levels. Um, that's part of the elevator service that we have. It'd be used for concerts. We'd be able to cater weddings and other parties. And the Conejo Community Center uses their kitchen a decent amount of times for events and stuff. So I think it will be used much more when we have those nice rooms hooked to it and we can actually do rentals for weddings and special events and stuff. Okay. And then one of the entrances to the all gender restroom comes through that hallway uh, or does it? No, that goes to a janitor's room. That comes off the vestibule there, right front of the elevator, you can get through the, through the room. Yeah, there's a little small little lobby. So from the multi-purpose room, yes, you go into a little area which takes you. To, you can go straight ahead into the uh, the janitor's closet to the left to the kitchen or to the right to the bathroom or the elevator. Okay, so if you know your, your way around, you can get to the restroom um, from the multi-purpose room oh, and the kitchen. Yeah, it's easy. Se several feet away. Yeah, I know the distance was just. Yeah, it's kind of tucked away there in a couple doors and, and so forth. And the wash basins, I don't know the, you know, the exact scale, but uh, for all the stalls that are there just two? There's two, there's two sets. So there's a small bank, I believe it's two sinks on the, the entry from the multi-purpose room. And then on the exterior entry door, I believe there's uh, three or four on that wall. Okay, on the outer works. right wall. Okay, well, it isn't very, now that you're pointing it out, so on the east. Correct. Correct. Okay, that, I didn't note, pick that, pick up on that, that uh, 
the other one I saw. Okay. Um, the second floor hallway uh, comes from the reception or the rec rece yeah, reception office. Is that what it says? Reception, reception office. Lobby. <coughs> okay. I'm sorry, I had a couple questions in reference to the elevator. Well, uh, in general, um, you know, I'm positively impressed with the layout and, and so forth. And the staff I know has gone over this thoroughly based on the use that uh, they <clears throat> currently have at the uh, Caneo Community Center to make sure that all those activities and functions can be served by these uh, amenities. Yeah, we, had, we definitely had a couple of iterations where based upon uh, Rick's input, they said, oh, that doesn't work for us, this works for us. We did, this is uh, not drastically different, but fairly different from where it was the first, their first go around of the floor plan. So mm -hmm. based upon Rick's input. Okay, and the second floor restrooms on the west side, um, is that anticipated for classrooms for young kids or something like that? Is that why the restrooms are so? Correct, they're, they're attached to the classrooms. So they, they, you can enter directly from each of the classrooms. Yeah, they're only for the classrooms. Yeah, okay. That's a, that's a request from the, uh, the teachers. Mm -hmm. No, I understand. Uh, well, again, and as uh, Director Nichols mentioned on the renderings and Director Huffer, uh, it's good to see the visuals associated with the uh, schematics and the drawings and so forth. And I'm wondering if uh, the selection of this architectural firm, uh, the first guy, first name of the architect and somebody else on our staff's first name had anything to do with the Selecting him. No, but he does have better hair than I. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, staff, uh, Tom on down and Jim on down and everybody, uh, good job. Director Cussworth, you had a, another question. Well, actually, it was kind of relating to yours. I keep looking at this and I don't see where the elevator is. And it seems like any big events, they might want to put it. Uh, in the upstairs, and then you would need a kitchen. And I, Kate, so just where is that elevator? I so, don't see. So off of both the or the uh, second floor lobby, it's just behind the staircase. So it's the X. X. Oh, it is the X, because I didn't see an equal X downstairs. I just saw that little X. So that little X downstairs is the same as the big X? Or, yeah. oh, these two Xs. Okay. All right, the two big Xs. Yeah. Thank you. I just didn't <laughs> yeah, see that. Close, uh, to the, close to the kitchen so they didn't have to go far to get into the elevator. No, so I, I was trying to think, are they going to take the food upstairs? Because I couldn't see elevator. And also, I think using the Eichler homes is brilliant because that's a real historical site. I mean, the Eichler homes are very noted. It's one of our few architecturally noted things in our city. So uh, thank you for thinking of that. Um, and also, a lot of the homes in the Shadow Oaks area have that low profile low profile flat look it was one of their styles so definitely fits into the neighborhood i thought it was interesting that both sue and i were the ones that mentioned that that gender restroom and i'm glad you're having full doors so thank you and thank you for mentioning the eichler homes because that was one of the questions i had and i forgot um did the architect and staff go buy some of the eichler homes there and kind of get a visual as to what uh, they were trying to, you know, put together for our community center. We didn't for this project, but just just knowing the area and architecture. So, because as Director Cussworth mentioned, they are unique, and they are a uh, sure. architectural. Um, besides unique, I was talking, 
I don't know if they're historical or something, mm -hmm. but uh, they are. iconic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Director Huffer. Well, Director Cusworth asked basically the same question I had. I'm not okay, then they'll say strong at, at, at reading floor plans. I can recognize doors and sort of recognize windows and, and restrooms, but I couldn't figure out where the elevator was, so I figured it had to be that big X <laughs> top or bottom. So I didn't, I didn't answer my question. Thank you. As a original high school architect student, that's where I was headed, become an architect. And then the military jumped in and I changed my career path. But um, they have drawings and so forth has uh, special interest in, uh, for me, but I don't want to bore you with a lot of other questions. And I placed second in the Southern California Edison Architectural Competition uh, on the high scores. Oh, congrats. Yeah, I, I really was heading in that direction. But. Yeah, well, you should be drawing these plans out. <laughs> and, and with that, like for any, any time, it's, it's the same like we tell like the public, if you guys ever want to come by, we hey, how's it going? We'll do a one-on-one -on -one with you, talk about stuff. We have our project website, which we try to update as much as possible. But yeah, it's a fascinating, this is something, you know, unique to the last few decades here. You know, like Dos Vienos was probably the last building that was built, and that's just a, I'll get to that. Uh, but this is a very unique facility and, and loved. And so anytime you guys want to talk about it, we're more than happy to meet you on site, meet here, talk about the plans, do whatever, because it's, it's, a, it's a fun project. Now sign me up and let me know when it's a good time. Okay. Director Nichols. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a request, if I could, please. We've heard several comments about uh, oak tree locations. Would it be possible to get a site plan of just the, the footprint of the community center itself and the immediately adjacent sycamore and oak tree so we can see exactly what the proposal is for those existing trees, uh, if there's any encroachment or proposed removals and all the ones that are gonna be remaining, I think that would help us to get a better feel for what's gonna stay and what's not gonna stay or what's impacted or what's not. We could get that, I'd appreciate that. And, uh, and then maybe at the end of this, we'll all get our architects certificates when we're through reading and approving them. So. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're sure welcome. Any further questions or comments? If not, I'd uh, entertain a motion associated with the recommendation. Director Huffer. I'd like to move approval of staff recommendation to authorize the general manager to enter into amendment number one to the contract with AGD, uh, the dollar amount listed there for phase three of the process. Thank you. Do we have a second? Director Cusworth. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the recommendation. Uh, no further comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none, that motion will pass. So go, go get them, General Manager. This is exciting. Okay. We're now moving on to uh, item number, I'll get there. 9B, uh, establish an ad hoc project, project property acquisition committee and select two board members to serve on this committee. And uh, Mr. General Manager, you wanna give any background? Yes, and I wanna be brief. It's about, according to my phone, 518, and we do wanna be able to adjourn to have dinner before the six o'clock if we can. So my very brief report will will be to remind everybody that in July, we brought to this board in closed session some information about our interest in the Hillcrest Christian School, uh, former Hillcrest Christian School site. Um, we talked about it then. Then in September, we talked about the Thousand Oaks Boulevard mixed use, uh, measure E, um, you know, parks per population ratios, the Quimby fees, and then in October, we identified a property on Teal Boulevard between Carlson's and Lupe's that was actually had a for sale sign on it. So we've had this discussion happening for the last few months. And if you'll remember at that last October meeting, you know, we said, 
we, we don't really have anything identified. We don't really know what we're exactly looking for because we don't know where the houses are built, but we do want to have an ad hoc property acquisition committee to kind of be standing by should the opportunity for a further look into a property present itself. And I can tell you that I don't know when that might be. I don't know where it might be. Um, there, you know, the, the marketplace will have to probably dictate where where something might become available. Um, you know, I just think by us talking about it and letting, you know, the world, the good vibes go out into the world, you know, it might become pretty well known among developers, property owners on the boulevard that the park district is, is interested. If some units are going in, you know, we might want to be part of a discussion um, so that we can maintain our parks per population ratio and get our parks near near where future people might live. So with that, you know, the recommendation is to establish this ad hoc committee. I'd want two board members that would um, really just be there when um, some further investigation that would take some decent amount of staff time to present itself. Because right now, like we can all drive by a sign on the boulevard and kind of shrug our shoulders and go, oh, that's for sale. Um, we don't feel like we need the board or the ad hoc committee to inquire just to say, hey, what are you guys asking or whatever, you know, try to get some preliminary stuff. But if it goes much further than that, we start spending a little money on appraisals or getting title reports just to figure out what is actually happening. We might want to just do that in conjunction with a couple board members. But just to be clear, the committee can't and wouldn't make any kind of final deals or make any kind of final decisions about property acquisition that can only be done by our full board you know so whatever would happen would obviously need to ultimately be brought back to the full board if and when something presents itself so with that i leave it to the five of you to 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 come up with two names if if you so choose to participate in a ad hoc property acquisition committee okay anybody yes director holt I, I would be interested, I've got a little background in real estate too, but um, I, you know, I don't know. I'm sure the other people all want to be on it too, so whatever. Okay. <laughs> Director Nichols. You know, I just think that this is very timely with the current environment that we have with the general plan review that's going on with the city. Uh, you know, we're looking to the future. We've talked many times, as, as our general managers point out about what our needs are as a district. Um, in fact, last night at our Costco board meeting, and Mr. Huffer was appointed to the ad hoc committee on, you know, looking to the future for staffing and, and the, you know, direction of that agency. So we're kind of in that realm right now of how do we move forward? And I think this is a, a great opportunity to be on the precipice of, of taking advantage of these opportunities when they come forward. So I appreciate the uh, suggestion and yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to serve too, but I'll leave that up to those who want to uh, join in. But thank you for bringing it to our attention. Anybody else? Director Helper. If it's appropriate, I'd like to move that we uh, approve staff recommendation to establish the ad hoc committee with Director Holt and Director Nichols. No? No. I'll, no. I'll second it. We should let them go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I thought you were done. I, I made the motion, but. Okay, there is a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, I too, as chair, wanted to be on the committee and I have experience as Director Holt mentioned, she's had experience. So um, my experience was as a franchisee, um, looking at properties and um, number of properties that was in 70, 71. And uh, then in the early 2000, I was um, tasked with creating a, a company well, a couple times, but in the early 2000s, a, a company where I had to go through the Caneo Valley looking for real estate and so forth. And based on my having been here, you know, in 65 before all the development and so forth. I feel that I have um, experience in, in um, what was the term I was going to use? Uh, 
not investment, but anyway, I feel that I have uh, a relationship with our community where I have a good understanding of the park district and uh, the city and where we've been. In that case, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. So, um, can I speak? Well, you have to, somebody's got to make a motion. I mean, if you don't well, want me, fine, you know. No, yes, well, I, can, I've withdrawn my motion. Yeah, okay, so I guess I've withdrawn my second, but can I make a comment? Sure. So, um, can we have more than one? I used to be a real estate agent. So I sold real estate for many years, but I'm not particularly interested in being on this ad hoc committee because I feel that this is one that everything will come back to the board at exactly. some point and that a lot of our expertise in this can also be used, uh, you know, post, you know, post if people are looking. And I think that also expertise can be given um, if we find things that we can be giving that to the ad hoc committee. I'm also wondering, um, can we have more than two members on the ad hoc committee? So it can only be two members. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm assuming that Mr. Huffer is not interested in being on the committee. I am not interested in being on this committee, though I am interested in giving input at some point. So I don't really want to choose between uh, these three people. So I guess it would be between the three of you to decide. Is Would that be it? Yeah, the chair has Mr. The, Mr. Chair? Mr. The, chair, you can do it. I okay. Mean, Mr. Chair, I, I'd like to okay, withdraw my offer and and since you and i want to say this correctly senior members in time on the board uh to have the opportunity to do that and i would be glad to serve as uh director cusworth said it's going to come to us anyhow exactly and so i'll be happy to provide input at that point so i'll be happy to uh, have the two of you serve on that at our committee director Holt. Um, yeah, well, what, what I'm mean, after our last meeting, I was looking around too to see, you know, because we had a map of what was available, perhaps, or and um, I, you know, whoever is on the committee, I mean, if it's not me, okay, but um, uh, it, I would have done it like two people going together. And conferring on, you know, if you're actually looking at some of the property um, and getting a feel for that area. Uh, so, um, I mean, I think it's good that there's the that, two. That's people. part of the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but right anyway, now we're just but selecting. Whatever. Right now we're just selecting <laughs> committee members. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, we can meet. Yeah, we can meet with the start meet with the committee members. Say, hey, how are we exactly? So how, what, 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 how should we? Because it, it, there's not going to be just one way to it, it's going to be multi pronged methods. And, and like Jim was saying at the beginning, it's more or less like, hey, let's just so we can bounce back ideas and just uh, good and whatever, like what a process and guidelines. But then, yeah, go to the full board or even in post session to the full board where the full board can say, here, this is the future. My here are my thoughts. But, yeah, no, I, again, as been mentioned a number of times it comes to the full board mm -hmm. it's just that you know i guess having and, and director holtz lived in the community a long time too but just having the opportunity and knowing um people in the coquanas and you know other individuals in real estate and so forth i just feel i have a lot of uh, foresight and, and opportunities to and, and also uh, opportunity to be, uh, do something really uh, helpful for the park district, so. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that would be ideal would be to know somebody who knows somebody who wants to donate a big piece of property. That's, that's always the, uh, the, the, the golden home run. But um, yeah, I mean, I can hear, I mean, if I'm going to characterize what I'm hearing, Doug's graciously sort of fixed rest and interest but said hey i'm good backing out so i hear that we have two board members that are both expressed interest that the others would therefore be supportive of and again this is not gonna be like the full board will be exactly. totally aware of anything we do uh we can't really do anything without 
you know, price and terms is a closed session item for the whole board. So we can come back with any frequency we want to talk about any ideas that come up. But um, I don't think this is gonna happen quickly um, unless the city moves units from measure E bank into the boulevard in a, in a way that's faster than, you know, that, that, you know, until that starts to happen, we just don't know where they're gonna go. So we're kind of waiting to see what the city does with the measure E units. And then shortly after that, I expect the land use part of the general plan update will also be an indicator of where more units may go. So um, those are kind of the two big drivers on when the, you know, or, or to guide us to where we would want to look because there'll be one, they'll be telling us where the units are likely to go. So. Okay, I think I hear the consensus and understanding of the process. Uh, there will be uh, two members on the ad hoc committee uh, doing preliminary work and investigation, working with staff as directed. And then obviously it all comes back to the full board. So mm -hmm. I'd entertain a motion at this time with the recommendations as understood. Director Huffer. I'll move that we approve staff recommendation to establish the ad hoc property acquisition committee be staffed by Director Holt and Director Lang. Thank you, Director Huffer. And I'll second that motion. Thank you, Director Cutsworth. Any other comments or questions? If not, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Attention sharing on that motion passes. May I just say one really Yes. I know we're trying to move along. I, I didn't mention the reason I passed this out was for all of you guys to have. This is a chronology of the park and facility acquisition. And it is sorted under the year acquired of the property. That doesn't necessarily mean that we purchased it because Del Prado and Sycamore, the 2007 and six at the very bottom of the list, um, those were not purchased by the district. Those were just dedications that finally came along through the development of Dos Vienos. So just so you know, I think the last time that we flat out purchased one of these properties goes deep into the 80s and we're not even 100% sure because most of this is dedications as part of track maps and stuff. So it, it goes way, our expertise in just going out and buying property is, is pretty limited with your in-house staff. So this is gonna be something we're relying on experts with. Well, uh, I was just wondering on the Hills, Crest Center, do we even own it? No. We acquired a long, a 25 year lease in 2002. Okay, but yeah. we don't own the property no. here. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's just, this is just a nice example to see about what we got and when the seventies were, look at that, that was a boom, boom decade, but that's it. <laughs> I think this is great. I really appreciate this. Thank you. That's it. I have a question. Andrew and Tom and Tom and, and, and others on Buyer Park, which says, does that say 188 cumulative develop? Oh, that's progressive. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty much all about, I, yeah. I'm with you. Park I look, parks, yeah. yeah, I still don't know. Yeah. Anyway, take that home. It's, you know, it's just data rearranged in a way that is relevant to like how, when, when have we acquired property? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Appreciate the information. Okay, let's that takes care of new items. We're moving on to item 10 reports and announcements. We have 10 A through E. Uh, any particular ones people will have comments or Director Huffer? Let's have a request for Melissa. You know, every meeting we get these investment reports, and I know we have to get them, but could I request because I I'm, I'll be honest, I, I don't go through them. It's the <laughs> same thing. But could I request that if there are any notable or significant changes in any of the data that you could point that out to us in like maybe two sentences or something like that as opposed to 2,000 pages? Sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, Director Nichols. Could I follow up with that also? Yeah, uh, uh, same thing, Ms. Smith. I noticed that well, I won't say that these are redundant and that it's the same information, but with the same format, you know, and seeing page after page, you know, it's kind of hard to sell. Okay, well, what's different? What I usually look at is where's the rate? You know, how are we doing? You know, I know we're not you know, getting ever too much more over 2%. Now it's much less than that. 
but are we obligated to get hard copies of this and for viewing or can we get electronic copies distributed via email for reference? You know, I think this this question has come up in Cheryl's assessment looking into it when it came up a few years ago before I think you guys were on the board um, was that we, we we do have an obligation. You're, you're the board, the fiduciary over the money, and you have an obligation to sort of get the information about what our you know money's doing. So whether it could be distributed electronically versus printed in the packet, I don't know. It is the source of uh, concern among the public about their government, whether we're spending money right or oh, doing right. things with money right. So this is one of those transparency oh, the, over, I know it's more than anyone wants to look at, but like I actually, I was just reading my Capri board packet for tomorrow. And I got a big thick, you know, thing about the investment report for Capri and where all the money Capri has is and stuff. It's kind of the same thing. And I'm with you. I, you know, whether we have certain number of shares of some, you know, minuscule stock, you know, I, I personally am looking at bottom lines month over mm -hmm. month numbers or something, mm -hmm. which is the summary that we provide on the, you know, the right. So to me, that's what I look at and focus on. Um, not necessarily what vehicle the money is invested in, but really what change is happening month over month. So um, well, yeah, in fact, I would like to re request that if not collectively, at least personally, um, you know, if we can get maybe page one or two hard copies and the balance of it, you know, distributed electronically. Um, and, and I don't know if maybe just I think like a little footnote that says, you know, the balance of the investment information is been distributed electronically yeah. or something like that yeah. alone. Does That's, this come because we do get this electronically? Does that come with it or is this not? Yeah. It, yeah. Part of the whole board package that's available on our website. Right, because I always, well, I mean, I always get something electronically every Friday, you know, every or Friday yeah. or Saturday. Do, is that do we in get there? this hard? We get this electronically from the county, so it's just a matter of, I don't know. No, I'm just wondering if this is in our board packet. Maybe it's not. Is this in our board packet that Aline sends out to us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking at. They're talking about all the backup to investment summary for month ended. That's like the bottom line that yeah. information uh -huh. yeah and then all the backup is is what the money is all invested in and this is like laif and the you're, county you're correct, you're correct Kelly. No, no, the whole thing is when you click online the whole thing is online that's right. what i said it's already so online every friday if you click on that you get the right you get this i never click on oh yeah wait, wait. so we'll just we'll keep it on yeah it'll be all in the online version but we'll try to not print all the you don't need to print it right. because we have it online and i'm afraid i'm like mr huffer i mean this is just i don't have time to like go through all of this we're assuming that you know that's her job she's watching over this so yeah, that's we what already the, have the it public online. gets skeptical when you go, yeah, the staff's looking at the money. We don't have to look at the money. That's like, that's like one of the fiduciary oversight jobs is we're all looking at the money. That's and, true, uh, but we do have a financial committee also, correct? Right, right. Um, yeah, no, yeah, we'll do that. We'll, 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 we, we can do it electronic. Okay. Yes, Director Hole. Um, I, I think you're just asking what uh, for any of the items in 10. And I would just like to make a comment. I think I saw in here that Rochelle put something in about the uh, the uh, visits to veterans that the senior um, uh, volunteer program ran. And I just want to make another comment about that, if I may, because um, I've been talking to, to uh, Patty Ham about, about that before and after the event. And um, I think uh, they went to they saw 40 veterans um, and there were four World War II vets. Uh, one of the fellows uh, flew in, he was an air in the Air Force, flew in World War II, Korean uh, event and Vietnam. And uh, they just, I mean, that's amazing. Um, and um, that there's somebody that we had recommended and I and, and Patty was just she thought these two guys were just so great um, and one's 96 and the other one's 99 and uh, 
the one who is 99, uh, they, they both served, you know, in many ways. But in World War II, he saved the Tower of Pisa. And uh, because the, they, wanted, uh, they wanted to destroy it, the American forces wanted to destroy it, um, but um, uh, because they didn't want the Germans to get the Tower of Pisa. And somehow he was in charge and he wanted to save it and he saved it. But um, she, Patty just thought that was, I mean, she just enjoyed it so much herself, you know, and they just did a wonderful job. So I just wanted you to know about that. Gee, thank you. How are we doing this for our schedule? It's 5.40. We, we have a hard start at 6. But, you know, if we get tight, we're able to eat while Andrew and Brian start the presenting. Okay. We'll move on to item 11, department Mr. reports. Mr. Chair? Pup? Oh, yes. Yeah, I had another question on one okay. of our items. I'm sorry. Uh, on the enrolled participants report from the recreation side of the house, and looking at the chart, thank you, by the way, for keeping us apprised of the things that we don't want to have to read. But they're, they're in front of us anyhow. Curiosity, when I was looking at the percentage of canceled, I'm looking at uh, on page mm -hmm. 105, and the uh, fifth column over is as percent canceled. Mm -hmm. I noticed it looks like Orchard Center had 9% canceled. Mm -hmm. Community, or Canal Community Center had 25%. Mm -hmm and Thousand Oaks had 60%. Uh, it seems like quite a, a variance from one to the other. Is there anything particular about those three sites where one would have more cancellations than another? I think if you look at the number that they offered, there's a difference in the numbers that they offered. Um, but um, Conejo Community Center doesn't have a lot of space for rooms. Um, to run classes, so they were actually using the Global Center for some of their classes, and I just think they just didn't go that well. So in the beginning, their preschool is going very well. So um, that's more more of what it is. Some of it has to do with staff that they were able to get or not get. But if you look at Borchard compared to CEO or to Canal Community Center, Borchard has many more rooms to use for programming. Okay, yeah, because I was looking at the number offered. For Borchard was 46 and for TO was 42. So very similar what was offered. Mm -hmm. But as far as cancel, it was significantly different. I didn't know if there's a particular trend there or just that's just the way it turned out. I think a lot of times staff over offer classes also just to see what people are going to do right now, especially in these times. We don't know what people are going to actually sign up for. So we may have offered more classes and this was in the summer so this was still kind of pretty fresh yeah. so we were offering a lot of things that we just didn't know if people were going to take and then as even though we might have canceled those classes some classes we might have moved kids into other classes to to fill them up so okay yeah all right i just was mm -hmm. curious thank you mr chair yeah um, i'm trying to move this along but uh on page 106 on page two of two of, of that um Item D, if you look at the last sentence, it mentions the net change uh, from some, summer 2019 to 2020, about $530,000 based on the impact from uh, COVID. So, okay. And appreciate all the work the staff's done to keep things as uh, active as possible. Item 11, department reports. Mr. Hare. Sure, thanks Chair Lang, members of the board. Uh, you have in your packets or you've already been given the photography contest. So we've got uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, wonderful photos that have been submitted. Uh, uh, select your top five in each category and please give them back to us by next board meeting. And then for typically at this meeting, we'd be talking about or uh, talking with our spring events of Canal Valley Day's Chili Cook-Off at Oak Heart. Uh, we had asked them to give us some dates so we can pencil them in. Uh, Chili Cook-Off has, they're penciled in. Oak Heart is still looking at some things. Uh, Canal Valley Day's, interestingly enough, um, says that they need to go in June, which is during our refreshment period, but they're going to be all in the parking lot like how we wanted in the past. So they said they're not going to be on the field. 
and they're only in the parking lot. Uh, so we'll see how that comes to fruition in the next few months and see if we'll be able to um, have those events. And if, if it does go the, that way, we'll bring an agreement to the board at that time. I'm available for questions. Okay, any questions for Mr. Hare? No. All right, moving on to Recreation Division, Ms. Callis. Thank you, Chair Lang, members of the board. You guys have lots of information in your packet, so I am not going to go through that just to save time because I know we have other things we need to move on to. But I did want to cover just one thing. We did our fall survey for those that participated in our fall programs, and that is this sheet that should be in your packet. So I thought there was some really cool information. Um, but basically, if you look at everything, we are above 95% percent pretty much in all of the areas as far as are our programs fun and enjoyable do we have good equipment and um, content and are we following and people feel comfortable with our COVID safety protocols so people are really happy we actually had 14 percent response rate which is huge most surveys you get three percent and you're happy so again we've exceeded um the percentage and response rate that um, folks are responding to. And they had lots of really good comments about staff too. So we're using that for our employee um, of the year uh, that will be coming out in the next uh, program guide. So with that, I'm available for questions. Are there any questions of Jeff? Okay, and uh, as mentioned in the uh, report and uh, correspondence from Patty and so forth, um, as the photo indicates uh, there was a, a gathering of five veterans at uh, my house. And uh, I had a couple emails from those individuals uh, thanking me for involving them. And our neighborhood and Director Huffer uh, made the effort to uh, come by also, even though he personally wasn't a veteran, but uh, his wife, Gwen, was an officer in the Navy, medical officer. And I was really glad that he showed up. Okay. Um, Management Services Division. Melissa. Yes, thank you. I'll be super brief. Um, I just wanted to give a big thanks to Mark for all of our Zoom magic, especially today. So that's all I'm gonna be saying. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna knock on wood for the rest of the day. <laughs> but I'm available for any questions. Are there any questions, from Melissa, on the finance? Okay, moving on to general manager's report, 11D. I have no report. Okay. Item E, director's reports and follow-up reports on meetings, conferences attended. Director Huffer. Just very briefly, uh, Director Nichols already mentioned we had a, a Costco board meeting just last night, somewhere along the way. And uh, relatively brief, we did uh, establish a uh, ad hoc committee that will be looking at um, staffing for um, Costco. I don't know when that's going to actually have a meeting, but that's at least we're we're talking about it now. So, uh, and then no other meetings. Is, I, I have since it's sort of related to CRPD. I've been attending a number of the uh, Saturday food distribution um, over at Canoe Creek Condos for the Safe Passage program, and it's it's amazing the the number of volunteers they get out. The the amount of food that they're handing out every Saturday is just absolutely incredible. So uh, it, that's it's a great program that Safe Passage is putting on, and we're starting to get ready for the tax program. Uh, training will start in December and in January. They'll be ready to go early February. Thank you, Director Huffer. In reference to your comment on Costco staffing, would that just be the Rangers or are there other positions? Well, I suspect Rangers is going to be the biggest issue. Okay. Yeah, there there were no details. It just it was. This is so. okay. Thank you. Any other questions of? Or oh, just director's reports? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, just to point out, we also had a, a Costco special meeting a few weeks ago. We haven't met for a whole month here, so I had to go back way far to find that we had a special meeting with Costco. Uh, that was on October the twentieth. And that was to approve uh, some funding for the uh, Ventura County uh, Fire Safe Council 
to participate with COSCA in basically imp implementing an outreach program for fire safety here in, in the city of Thousand Oaks and with the, uh, basically the COSCA footprint. So we did approve that. So we're looking forward to working with that organization uh, as well. Uh, then on the 21st, I had a CARPD board meeting of direct, uh, board directors meeting and I go back. And then on the 4th of November, I had lunch with the general manager. And then, uh, as we mentioned, we had a, uh, a Costco board meeting last night. And then on Tuesday, here at this room, we had an ad hoc Rancho Portrayal committee meeting with the general manager and uh, Mr. Hare to review some of the up and coming uh, activities at the uh, Portrayal Community Center, well, Equestrian Center. So those are my activities to report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Director Kessworth. Oh, I've been doing all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, but I'll just say one thing. The Stagecoach Inn is having an Unwrap the Caneo. It'll be all outdoors. They, I was, I'm on their COVID committee. So they're taking temperatures, they're taking reservations, they're um, do, they have all of the information from the reservations so they can do the um, contact. And just to say to uh, Mr. Nichols, they do know if somebody goes in and gets tested positive and, and that is recorded by the city or they, you know, somebody is tested positive and they know that they're tested positive, uh, they are asked to give all of the places that they've been. And then those places are notified. Therefore, if somebody came to our event and said that they got COVID and maybe 10 or 12 other people tested positive and also said they were at the event, then we would know that that was probably a gathering. So it's not perfect, but that's what the county is doing with this tracing. So I didn't know that, but Pam, the um, head of the Historical Society said that she had actually been contacted to say somebody at this place got COVID. It was at her school, she had to be tested. And so that, that is going on. So that's why they're taking all the information and they're trying to be uh, bathroom monitors, roamers, stakes, they're trying to be very careful. But one reason I wanted to tell you all is on the first two Saturdays at 2.30 at the Stagecoach and I will be portraying Reba Hayes Jeffries in case any of you want to come <clears throat> and see me perform. They're doing a radio show of women of the Caneo. So uh, it should be a good event. State uh, Chumash is doing things. I've been to lots of stuff, so I'm going to tell you all about it. Okay. I think okay. we need a preview. What? We need a preview. If I had my script here, I could do it. Director Holt, do you have anything to report? Um, no, did did we mention or did you mention, uh, Rochelle, about uh, Pete uh, Pete's presentation, Zoom presentation? Maybe, I mean. You mean his retirement? Well, his retirement, yeah. but also he did the Zoom um, uh, thing, bringing, kind of. Oh, the meet and greet. That was meet and greet, right. a while, we, yes. Um, God, has it been that long? Anyhow, uh, there was a, the teen center did their meet and greet. Of course, it wasn't in person for the school district and everything. So um, him and Elizabeth and Dan did an awesome job. Um, Caneo Coalition for Youth and Families sponsored it. And um, it went off really, really nicely on Zoom. Thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I attended my regular MRCA Conservancy meetings. Um, in fact, the conservancy meeting was a three hour one this past Monday. Um, a lot of important things we covered, plus a lot of public speaking. Um, I too met with the general manager and performance review. Um, and it is Zoom on the Canal okay, Community see. Center. And there was one other one I was going to, oh, um, unfortunately, and you, you may have gotten the information, I think, through the general manager based on letters that you have to sign that uh, Pleasant Valley um, Rec and Park District had two incumbents not get reelected and um, Rancho Simi had one board member not get reelected. So. And uh, we were very fortunate that uh, both Director Huffer and myself were uh, reelected. 
in last Thursday's um, ACORN was a banner uh, um, publication, that's not the right term, but um, for the park district, there is, uh, you know, the uh, letter on the Veterans Day uh, parade event. Uh, there was the interview with the Director Huffer and myself post election, and then uh, my letter was also published. So uh, CRPD was well represented in last Thursday's uh, ACORN. Okay, that concludes my report. Um, Moving on to item 12, request for status reports and items for subsequent agendas. Do we have any? Um, 13, a recess to allow CRPD board members staff time for a short break, really short, uh, before the 6 p.m. Zoom meeting with the City of Thousand Oaks sure. Sure. General Plan understand. Advisory Committee. We got five minutes. I don't know that they necessarily broadcast. I think they were doing it live through YouTube, but then I think this will be something anyone can go watch if they just go to the TO website and there'll be a link. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Probably a link on the website. Right. Well, our audio wasn't good at the broadcast, so we can go back and hear it clearly. Okay. Likewise. <laughs> 